Hi, Richard. Hello. Yeah. So um, we wrote this book, and um, it was based sort of around the idea of family trees and that sort of thing. And I guess most people are sort of used to the idea of a family tree, but, but what's happening at the DNA level is, I guess, the realm of biology. Well, yes, and I think that was a thing that we really came up with and explored in a, in a big way, was the distinction between counting family trees at, at an individual body level. You know, you're, you've got four grandparents and eight great-grandparents and 16 great-great-grandparents and so on, until they start overlapping, and which they will, they've got to. But you could also do the same thing for every gene in your body. Um, every gene in your, in your body can trace its own family tree back and has an, has an origin at some point, uh, and, has a number of, and that origin has a number of descendants. Yeah. Not all human. Yeah. It's a very wonderful idea, yeah, actually. It's a, it's, it's, it, yeah. the, the lo lovely idea that each, each gene has its yeah. own idea of the family mm -hmm. tree. And from, from, men, from many points of view, you and I are quite distant cousins. Yeah. But from certain points of view, from the point of view of certain genes, we're yeah. probably very yeah. Close cousins, and yeah. not very close, but I mean but, but closer. Yeah, yeah, closer, exactly. With respect to that particular the, gene. Yeah, or, or yeah. section of DNA, I yes. guess. Um, and I guess the, one of the interesting things is that while the family tree, as you go backwards, your genealogy, your family tree sort of expands, the, the one of any one particular gene starts, con, sort of contracts down into individual lineages. And we, th this is what this, this picture we yes. had in the book sort of represented, in that these were the great grandchildren. So there's Albert and Victoria That's there. Right. Yeah. And are these must be all the, the, other, the other ancestors of, the, of Albert and Victoria's descendants. And this line traces the haemophilia gene, yeah. some of whom were female and therefore didn't, didn't actually have haemophilia, some of whom were male who did. So yes. this is, if you like, the black is the family tree, and yes. the red is just tracing one gene tree, and it goes back and back and back and contracts in time until it comes it, back to it, one. It, yes. And you can do that with presumably any gene. You could do it with any gene. Yeah. I mean, yeah. haemophilia is easily labelled, easily marked. You know, you know who had haemophilia. These poor guys all died of it, yeah. probably. Um, and so, so that's just a, a tracer marker. Yeah. Um, and you could have done that with any of your genes. It would make a similar pattern. And this is the thing. This is effectively what we're doing with mitochondrial leave. Yes. But you're just tracing the female line, it's yes. a specific line, but um, it's still sort of contracts. The, the back. problem with sex is that it constantly mixes up all the genes and so tracing back would be just a mess. Since the mitochondria only go down the maternal line, you can forget about all your grandparents except one, your maternal grandmother, all your great grandparents except one, your maternal, maternal great grandmother, etc. So in every generation there may be sixteen great great grandparents, but only one of them gave you your mitochondria. And so you can trace your mitochondria much more easily and that's why geneticists use mitochondrial DNA as their preferred marker. The other one that's, that's easily traceable is the, is the Y chromosome, because just as the mitochondria go down the female-female line, the Y chromosome goes down the male-male line. I think there's a, there's a little bit of a misleading thing there, because people think that um, the, fe the mitochondria cover the female side, and the Y chromosome cover the male side, and between them that covers everything, but of course that's not oh, much no, at all, no. because they only cover that one that way, one, that single one, line back that's, straight to that's the right. Yeah. But it is interesting to, to ask whether Y chromosome Adam ever met mitochondrial <laughs> Eve, and the answer is absolutely, almost certainly yeah. not. And, uh, and also because, um, because males have a much bigger variance in reproductive success. Some yeah. of them have hardly any offspring, and some of them have loads, and that means that their family trees collapse to a point much more quickly. How many males. offspring did Mule Ishmael the bloodthirsty have? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> more than 800, anyway. <laughs> so the chance are pretty good that we're descended from him. Yeah, yeah well, that's true. And Genghis, Genghis Khan, Khan Genghis as well. Khan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's actually, actually evidence that, looking at Y chromosomes, that some enormous number of the population of Central Asia are descended from one male at about the time of Genghis Khan. Well, I mean, my, it's my paternal side that's Chinese, so hopefully I might well be able to Well, you to hope do that. that you inherit some of his... Yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> well, more, for, more for intellectual interest than anything yes. else. Well, but thank you very much, Richard. That's well, it's been, been a really pleasure as yeah, ever, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> the more you find there is the best to go.